Hi guys. I'm sorry I'm late for my conditional happiness talk. Um, it's going to be even shorter than I realized because I have a group to meet with at 8.30. So, alright, so conditional happiness. Um, a while ago I asked you guys how many of you were stuck in the trap, the conditional happiness trap, okay? Chasing some kind of means to an end. So for example, um, things that this could look like is, well, when I lose the weight, I'll be happy. Or when I get the lover of my life, I'll be happy. Or when um, I have a certain amount of money, I'll be happy. Or, yeah, you know, wherever this goes, I think you catch where I'm going with this. How many of you have or understand that conditional happiness trap and how many of you have fallen into that? Okay, that was my question and a lot of you could relate to what I was saying. So I'm going to leave you with this thought because I, I spoke about this this morning about the course, right? I'm going to leave you with this thought. If creation is finished, okay, and everything you choose comes with its own predetermined set of circumstances, okay, then isn't it better to manage your vibration as if you already have what you have and do not falter from there in order for you to achieve it? Because here's what I want you guys to think about, all right? I uh, have this concept, right? For example, if you want to see a rose, okay, you have to hold the image of the rose in your mind first in order for you to understand what it is that you're looking at outside of you. But that's kind of how reality works in general, all right? You hold the image here, and whatever you believe to be real is what you see, okay? Bottom line, that is what you're going to see, okay? So let's think about this, all right? If you are trapped in, I'll be happy when, you're automatically putting something outside of you, out of reach, you're creating distance, you're creating obstacles, all unintentional, right? No one does this on purpose to themselves, right? But what I'm trying to say is your natural state is one of peace, happiness, and joy. Our job entails removing the things that you need to get out of your own way, okay? You have to understand, at all times, you have an opportunity to find the next moment. It's this blank slate, right? If you're the potter, you're, you know, the potter doesn't ask the clay what it wants to be, it just simply forms the clay. So I want you to think of your story as an unformed moment or a clay that needs you to shape it into whatever you want. But the thing is, is you have this ability and you can do this all the time. And once you know this, you start trusting. And that's what's required, right? We can't get trapped in conditional happiness, although it is very helpful at first for our evolution. It's very helpful. You know, you strive for things, you strive for things, you strive for things, you strive for things. But you ever notice that when you reach your goal, you want more or it's bigger? You want more right so think about that you want to avoid this trap because it's way easier to foster intentionally set your heart brain coherence towards peace non-confrontation non-judgment calm quiet peace okay intentionally form this muscle and allow everything to come to you Okay, everything will come to you if you drop this need to control things. There's a certain level of surrender that we must have when we trust the universe to bring what we want. Okay, because when we don't trust, when we're trying to control everything, have you ever noticed how much you struggle against the contrast when the contrast shows up? Okay, you ever notice the closer you get to something, the more chaotic, the more impossible, the less likely it seems? Okay, this is your ego talking, not your heart. And your ego's job is to surround you with your doubts, your fears, your worries, all of the negative conditioning that you have unconsciously held on to. And this is what comes out like venom and ruins something that could be perfect if we forget that we have the ability to define everything and every moment for us and not against us. 
okay? There's a certain level of peace that comes with knowing that you are everything. There's a certain level of peace that comes from connecting with Source through our heart center. Our heart literally is the gateway to the astral realm, okay? It's the gateway to the spiritual realm. It's center, dead center, from this material lower level plane, okay, and the higher levels of our existence. There is no way into the higher levels of existence without feeling it real, okay? This is where the story of Jacob and Esau and uh, Isaac come in, okay? They had to convince, his brother had to convince his blind father that he was his brother in order to get the inheritance. If you remember that story, that is always universally true of every single human being on earth. Every single last one, all right? Because you have an obligation to convince your mind of whatever you want so your mind can reproduce it for you. Everything that you can ever need is already stored in here. We simply have to direct our focus and this takes strong will and intention and a concentrated level of force that is done on the mental plane to make a conscious choice to look away from our shadow, not bypass, not bypass, okay? We look at our shadow to see what it is that we've created, what it is that we've said, what it is that we're seeing, because we're seeing a snapshot of a moment that you've frozen in time for you to perceive it. All time is happening now, okay? So you've simply frozen it in order for you to define it, to look at it from all angles. It is not the end all, it is not the end all be all. There's nothing to fear in this moment. You simply have to make a conscious decision that when you're looking at it, be okay with the fact that you've created it, all right? Once you've achieved this, you have to make a conscious decision to turn towards what you want and stay there, stay there. Know that it is real. When you can convince your brain, okay, you will get your desired result. If you ever notice when they talk about the kingdom of God being all around you, it's not a place, it's not a thing, it's a state of mind. Oftentimes you'll see memes that say, when you master your vibration, everything comes to you. These things are accurate because you have to understand when creation is being already finished, then your vibration sets the tone for what you're seeing outside. If you notice when I often talk to you guys, I talk to you about raising your emotional mojo. Um, Abraham Hicks talks about getting inside the vortex and talks about the importance of your emotions and this is what attracts things. And a lot of people that now understand the law of assumption feel as if that's backwards, but it's not exactly backwards. It's actually true. See, your, your state of emotions com comes complete with all the predetermined states, okay? So if you are feeling lack, you will see plenty of lack everywhere. If you are asserting your wealth, you will see your wealth everywhere. But you have to make a conscious choice to hold this image in your mind above all else in order to receive what you, what you want. You have to make it natural. You have to make it feel real. Like, I could never play football in the NFL. Uh, you know, at least right now, this incarnation, this girl right here does not want to ever play in the NFL. I admire people that do. I love them. But that is not my skill. My skill is studying of absolute universal truths that set us free and teaching them. And I've spent a lifetime doing that, harnessing those skills so that I can be of service to humanity in this moment in time. I have no desire to be an NFL player, but let's just say that for whatever reason I did, I would have to know how natural it would be to not only love football, love how every game is played, understand the game inside and out, have every single experience possible in my head, okay, and make that real before I could be the first woman NFL person ever. Do you understand? But that's not going to happen with this girl right here. I'm not, I, that's, that doesn't feel natural to me. So when you're trying to manifest things, you have to make sure these things feel natural to you. You have to pay attention to what you're saying inside. Because the truth is, the only suffering we do is our imagination. 
or our perception of our past because we haven't understood how it serves us. So then we are going to do some suffering, right? We're going to be lost in that moment where we're judging an unformed moment and we're not appreciating it. But a lot of times what you find is if you do this hindsight 2020 back the hell up and look at your past again through different eyes, through loving eyes of appreciation, you will find that all of these experiences actually served you even when it felt like in the moment it wasn't, okay? So I'm talking to you about conditional happiness for a reason because your natural state is at peace in your center and you foster that through heart-brain coherence. You foster that through breath work. You foster that through Tantra. You do whatever feels good, but you go after that joy and you stay there, okay? Because this brings everything to you. It makes it way easier. Um, I'm a big fan of Richard Dots, and um, one of his books called It Is Done is a really great book that really outlines how we serve as our own obstacle, how we can unconsciously um, place our happiness outside of us and, and try and achieve it when in true essence and the way that the illusion works you want to hold your happiness here not dependent on anyone anything or any outcome okay and allow all the outcomes to come to you way different mentality okay so in a lot of these times we're going to be tested by certain circumstances Okay, and I do not mean ignore them altogether. I don't. I mean pay attention to what's being shown, but don't necessarily attach. Observe so you can see what needs to be fixed within yourself. I'm going to repeat the universal design. This is what every human being looks like behind the veil of illusion of themselves, of their own self-made story. I'm going to say it as many times as I need to so that you can always understand what it is you're seeing externally. Okay. Behind the veil, you are the source life that is God. You have created an imaginary identity, okay, that is huge because it's got to serve you for your whole time in, your, in the exponential point of your universe where you're going to be looking at your story made real. So you stand in front of this light pretending not to be everything in order for your eyes to see the universe below. But that is always your story made real and you enter this contract with God where God pretends to be everything you're not so you can know who you are. He agrees to play every role. You are the same God, but in order to know yourself, you have to participate in the game of life. So what I'm saying is, please don't bypass, please don't spend the whole time just meditating, but do foster the ability to control your mind because the ability to control your mind controls your joy, controls everything else because you foster what you have already unconsciously, which is peace. And peace is the most valuable thing you will ever have on earth. I don't have words to describe how easily things come to you when you are in a peaceful state of mind. But it does. Most of you will notice that you say something, it appears instantly, 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 instantly. When you guys are happy, have you noticed how quickly manifestations arrive? They're instant. Like, if you said, I want a free cup of coffee, you walk in and, and someone hands you the ticket voucher because you just walked in the store and they want you to try a new brand of coffee. It happens all the time. And it doesn't have to be so simple. It could be anything. Okay, but when you're worried, when you're feel for, fearful, or when you're placing conditions upon your happiness, you will achieve them, but it will seem much harder than it needs to be. I want you guys to remember that always creation is finished, and that our most important job we will ever do in life is manage that vibration, is understand that we are one and the same source with everything we wish to have. We would not want it if we didn't already have it. Lovers do not meet. They always were within one another. And for in order for them to cross paths, they must understand this. They cannot make divisions. They cannot get upset. They have to be able to understand how to find themselves within the other person because that's how you will understand how one you are serving one another. 
and this is true on a micro scale and it is true on a macro scale we put ourselves through these relationship exercises so we can understand the world on a much larger scale because when we're happy the world looks different okay recently I was asked this one question it's the last thing I'm gonna say because I'm out of time I was asked well okay all of these things are showing up and I get that they're showing up for transmutation but I'm ignoring it and some part of me feels heartless and this is what you're talking about and I had to stop her and say, uh, no, that is not what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about bypassing at all. I'm talking about acknowledging what you are seeing and choosing to see it better from behind the veil until the outside conforms to your inside because your focus is no longer facing the wrong way. We have to make the conscious effort to return our vision to the only first cause that will ever exist in the world in your reality you are always first cause of every experience you are always seeing the same thing you are simply choosing a different angle of perception so people what they do is show you their angle of perception so you can see in all directions because the truth is you are technically blind if you only use your eyes to see you are really blind because you don't understand the design is only a playing out of your inner conversation pretending to be other people so you have to be able to see through the eyes of the Holy Spirit who says hey we are all one we're all serving you this is how your thoughts are playing out so you can know where you are what are you gonna do next I'm with you and when you have that kind of peace you can walk through any valley shadow of death and limitations and whatever else you've conceived absolutely fearless knowing you will not be burned in those fires of affliction okay um, that is not to say that all the time that we spent unconscious of the fact that we were playing this game isn't a value it is but you can't lament your past and you can't be upset because all of those experiences formed you and every single soul contract that you entered in that moment served you whether you liked it or not you learned how to love yourself how not to love yourself what to teach others and what not to do or what to do in every single occasion this is valuable 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 information because what you guys don't understand is your fortune lies in your authenticity when you are unafraid when you're totally free to be you when you can speak your truth when you can tell your story and you're not ashamed sorry guys I've got to go to my call you're not expecting someone to complete you because you know you are complete and whole already you simply wish for someone to accompany you in your joy okay that is what we are after my loves please understand the difference conditional happiness is a trap it is helpful when we're unconscious but it is not helpful once we are awake trying to manifest things it is more important for you to focus on being happy peaceful and joyful because the truth is the bottom line this is your natural state you are trying to undo the conditioning kind of like an onion you want to peel back those layers until you get to the good part you know you want to peel that skin off just peel that <laughs> keep going peel the rough parts off until you get to that good part that's exactly what you're doing you're trying to find the center of yourself that is no longer enslaved to its story no longer believing it is separate that's all okay so Please think about what I'm saying. I do have to run to my class, but I love you guys. Think about it. Think about it hard and understand that if creation is finished, the hard part is over. The only thing you're doing is managing that vibration. All right? Managing that vibration. When you manage that vibration and you let nothing bother you and you just keep saying everything is happening for me, everything is happening for me, and you maintain that attitude, you start seeing how it actually is happening for you. And that's freeing.
that's very freeing. It's also way better than being afraid through life. And it's way better than thinking that things are against you or that the other shoe is gonna drop or having anxiety or any of those things. Please remember, the only time you're fearful or having anxiety or any of these other things is because you are focused the wrong way in your imagination and the guidance system is simply trying to tell you, can we get out of here? We actually don't exist here and um, we're tired of existing here. A lot of times that's why people end up feeling suicidal at times, to be honest, okay? Because that part of you that knows better wants out of that conception. But you don't have to go that extreme to get out of your dream. You simply have to become focused to what you're seeing inside and become present so that you can release the things that you feel as if you're not getting them because you're focused the wrong way. The only way we get things is going in and in and in and in, 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 right? Touch that heart. If you guys want me to lead heart brain coherence uh, meditations and things like that, absolutely, let's do it. But please, by all means, do not suffer and do not fall into the conditional happiness trap. It's not worth it. It's really not because you'll keep chasing. You'll, you'll keep chasing the next goal, the next goal, the next goal. So this will require a lot of effort on your part, but the truth is, before you even ask, God already answered. God already answered. Your desires are of the Father, meaning that your heart, what it is doing, for the record, is registering the things that you can't see. If you remember my analogy, I said one thing. You are like a warehouse that contains everything in the world. But on this plane, you are only able to see what you can see with a flashlight. The flashlight in this case is a metaphor for your eyeballs. Your eyeballs are only able to see but so far, okay? You cannot see into infinity with these eyeballs, okay? So what your heart is doing, it has extra sensory neurites, little brains in the heart. These are your higher senses, clairvoyance, clairalience, clairaudience, okay, clairsitience. All of these so-called psychic skills are normal of everybody. These air skills only like happen when you are connected to your, you're purposely and consciously choosing to say, brain, I need you to connect to here. This allows you to see further. So what is happening is the radar is going, oh, look, you'll want this. This is in your vortex. You want it. You want it. You want it. Trust me, you want this. You want this. You want this. Oh, I can see it. I can see it. So your heart's going crazy with desire on purpose. And the only way that you are ever going to get that desire is for you to purposely and consciously choose to allow your heart to be the seeing eye dog that leads you back. You cannot trust your brain and you certainly cannot trust your eyes. Your eyes don't have the capacity to see into eternity. Your eyes don't have the capacity to see into eternity. They can't see in that darkened warehouse of everything, of everything, of everything, of everything, of everything, ever, 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 ever. You are all wealthier than you've ever dreamed possible. And by wealth, I mean everything. Everything you've ever possibly dreamed of is already yours. It's already yours. It is your choice to connect to that heart and allow that heart to guide you and not, not stay stuck in this difference between your rational mind's choice to define things based on past experience or your heart's knowing sense that can see way beyond this plane. All right? Hope that helps, you guys. Um, trust me, you want your smile to be genuine. You want your love to be pouring out. You want your peace to be coming because this is the vortex that draws everything to you. And once you have that, you never worry about your next paycheck, where the bills are gonna get paid, if that guy is paying attention to you, if that girl is into you, you never worry about these things because they'll say things that you want to hear because you're vibing at the level that you want to be at already. That is the key. If you can treat your life like a choose your own adventure book, okay, stay there. Your natural state is not dependent on anything else outside of you. And this is a very good place to be because you don't have a care in the world. 
the world takes care of you. It's a way better way to live. <laughs> Trust me, you guys. All right? Mwah! Love you, and I am late for my group, so I gotta go. Love you. Bye-bye.